All right, guys, in today's video, I've got this brand new kit for my car. This is the Car Puride Apple CarPlay portable touchscreen IPS monitor. It's a seven inch monitor that you can use for your iPhone as Apple CarPlay or for your Android phone for Android Auto. A whole bunch of other additional features inside this, but let's go ahead and open this up, set it up in one of my cars and showcase the capabilities of this and how it performs. So here's everything in the box. This is the seven inch IPS touchscreen portable display. And I'll showcase how to mount this in a second. Inside the box, you have two different brackets that you can mount with. This is the windshield suction mount, which you can extend and position it in various different places. And if your windscreen is quite far back, then you also have the option to extend this out a little bit further. And then you also have a very long attachment from wherever you like to mount this. If you wanted to use this on your dashboard instead of the windshield, then you can connect it to the dashboard circular sticky mount pad here as well, and just connect it directly onto this. You also have the dashboard mount itself that comes with very strong adhesive double-sided tapes here that you connect to the bottom like so. And then you just connect this to the back of the monitor, and this can also be positioned in various different ways. And this also rotates 360 degrees if you wanted to twist it like this and position it however you like. You also have the power adapter for your car and an auxiliary cable. This is the CarPlay manual. So you can read all of the information, but what I'm going to do is dive into setting this up in the car and running through all of the options on the screen on how you can set this up for both your iPhone or your Android phone. Now, before I do that, let's go ahead and just show you how to mount this. You have four clips just there. If I take the dashboard mount, I would recommend stick this on first, take off the tape, make sure everything is ready. Then you simply just connect it and push it upwards, slot it into place, and there you have it, ready to use it. Then you've got the protective screen cover take that off how nice does that look really great I'm super happy with the design of this let's go ahead and test how responsive this is how it performs run through all of the different options now this comes in at $229 but take a look at the link in the description below check out the car pride website they have a whole host of different types of kits for your cars and this one specifically, I got without any attachment for a reverse camera, which you can also get as part of this kit, which I think is absolutely great if you wanted to take your capabilities of converting your car into having very high end tech in there for your phone. And just before we head outside, just to quickly show you the ports and the buttons on the screen, power button there on the top, on the left hand side, this is the power port a USB port so you can actually play back any music files from your USB directly onto this. The AV out, you have yourself the camera in so like I mentioned if you do get the reverse camera option that's where you'll connect it to. You also have a TF card slot. Likewise with the USB you can also play back some media directly from the SD card and then you also have a mic input there. So a very clean very simple design. Let's go ahead and now set this up in one of my cars. Okay guys, so I've now mounted it on my dashboard. I found a very convenient position just here. I've got it plugged into the power adapter, which is just below the center console here behind the gear stick. And I've got this connected to the auxiliary port so that every sound that comes from this device comes from the car's speakers. Now I'm in this Volkswagen up and this one doesn't have any screen in this car, which is why this would be something perfect for a car like this. If you have one of the new cars, like I have a Range Rover Velar, which has inbuilt CarPlay, I wouldn't recommend buying something like this, but if you don't have one of those cars and you have maybe an older car, this is going to transform your car completely and it will feel like a brand new driving experience. Now I've got this connected. The next thing left to do is to now turn it on and it will power on with the power adapter. And as you can see, it loaded pretty quickly. Now, just to run through some of the options here, you have something called iPlay, which essentially is your Apple CarPlay. The next one is Android Auto. 
Then you have AirPlay and AutoLink. This is screen mirroring options for your iPhone and Android. So if you wanted to share your screen and show people in the car something else, or if you maybe wanted to load up YouTube and watch videos on that when you're not driving, then you can do that via AirPlay. I'll run through the settings in a second, but you have the options to make phone calls, Bluetooth music, like I mentioned earlier, you can play music back from USB or TF cards. And then you also have your radio transmitter here with FM radio. Let's go into settings. And this is actually pretty responsive. I like the touch of this and it you know, doesn't really cause any lag or delay. Make sure to have this speaker setting on so that you don't have double audio coming directly from this device and from your car stereo. But because I've connected it through the auxiliary, everything that I've got is going to come from the local stereo system inside the car various different options just there on the left hand side so you can check all of your devices that you have connected set it to wi-fi you can go into bluetooth settings so i've just paired this with my iphone go into paired phone and then there's my phone there and it's very quick and easy to do it just showed up immediately you confirm with the pairing code on your phone and then it instantly paired and then the last one you have a video warning park line and these are settings that you essentially have if you set a rear parking camera along with this device now if i go back to home the main thing you guys will probably use this for is apple carplay now just before i load that a couple of things at the top you can make this into night mode just to dim the screen a little bit with the brightness you can also make the background a little bit darker if you need any more information there's a little help button that explains who you can email for that there's also a speaker bar just there on the top if you're listening to music and for some reason you just wanted to mute the music quickly the power button on the top actually doubles up as a mute button so when i'm playing some music to give you guys an example i'll press that to mute the audio rather than me turning the volume all the way down on the knob in the central console so now that's connected i'll mount my phone here and i'll open up spotify there we go apple carplay it's loaded and you know pretty much with every apple carplay system you can get loads of different apps that are compatible of course you can use this for navigation which is going to be very convenient for a car that doesn't have inbuilt navigation like this one and then for spotify those are the two main things that i would mainly use this for but then you can also download other apps youtube music for example is one of them you can check your messages make phone calls do many different things that you guys are aware of let's go ahead and play back something on spotify Let's go here, and it will play through the auxiliary. I'll just mute it with the button at the top, and you know, likewise. Obviously, I don't have controls on the car, on the steering wheel, or anything like that to move the music forwards and backwards. So I would have to use the touchscreen, but it's so secure. The adhesive pads on this are very strong, so this won't move. It's very solid as if it's kind of like inbuilt part of the car. And then I'll just have to use the touchscreen to go to the next songs. How quick and easy and very responsive is that? Of course, the sound quality will be the same as whatever your car stereo system is like but that's expected and this is you know something that has completely changed this car which i feel like is getting a little bit older now to something that's a little bit more modern by having just this screen in place so i'll pause that go back out and likewise i now with this package have an inbuilt satellite navigation system in place with google maps so if i wanted to go somewhere i can add destination Let's say I wanted to grab some groceries. Quick and easy. There you go. Now I can just drive and it takes me exactly where I want to go without having to use my phone screen mounted on this magnetic phone mount that I have here. So it's, you know, a brand new experience. And I think for $229, this is absolutely worth it to completely transform your car into a more modern Apple CarPlay Android Auto compatible car, which you can link to your stereo system itself. So there you have it guys, that pretty much covers the majority of the things which I think you would like about this product. Take a look at the description below, $229. You can also get optional items like a Bluetooth remote control for this, or get the kit that has a reverse parking camera, which will also transform your car into a much more modern car. 
in addition to having Apple CarPlay system in place. Very responsive, very happy with the screen. The sunlight is shining and it doesn't really get interference with the screen. I can see everything visibly. Everything just works out of the box and I didn't have any problems with this. And like I mentioned, many different functionalities available to connect various different things. But for the most part, if you have it just for Apple CarPlay and that's it, then you get all of the Spotify, Bluetooth capabilities, making your phone system wireless to listen to music rather than using an auxiliary cable directly with your phone. It gives you the freedom to have your phone separately elsewhere. The only thing I would say is make sure to position this in a convenient location where you can get the auxiliary cable directly into your auxiliary input and also the power adapter into your power plug. So wherever you have that socket, just make sure the cable will reach there and then you should be absolutely fine to go ahead and use this device. That's it. Any questions you guys have, drop them down below. If you like this video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up and I review things like this all the time and I've got new videos out every week. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any cool gadget videos and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.